Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. I'm Matt Pullen, and this is our place to share all about how to use your iPad creatively in your classrooms. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that we release. Now let's get stuck into today's video. Hey, so in this movie, we're gonna take a look at iMovie trailers. So a different kind of way of making movies that is a great way for learners to think about literacy, think about books that they've read, just a really, really quick way to get into movie making without having to focus too much on any of the editing. So we're gonna jump into iMovie, tap on the plus, but this time we're gonna choose trailer. Now what you first kind of see when you go into it is along the bottom, there are different types of movie trailers that you can create. And if you tap on any one of these trailers, it will give you a preview of what that video will look like. So you'll see here, there's kind of two to six cast members. You're thinking, oh, okay, so this might be something where I've got a lot of people in it. Um, and I'm just gonna play this through now to give you the, the preview of what you are going to create. title your films. You add in, obviously, all of your own pictures and the text, etc. in the way that transitions in, that's all set for you. You change the text, you change the pictures. The music stays the same, you don't want to play around with any of those things. You think, okay, well, is that the sort of movie I want to make? Or maybe I'm thinking about something like an expedition. So again, you can play around with lots of these things. Again, it tells you how many cast members, preset time, different sort of music in there. We get you out the pictures but all of the fonts, all of the backgrounds, these transitions stay for you. So actually, do you know what? I think I like this Expedition one. I'm going to use this, so I tap on Create at the top. And the first thing you'll see that you're um, given is the chance to create your outline. So mine isn't going to be called The Quest. Mine is going to be um, a Harry Potter-based one. So, so I'm going to call it Potter's Journey, say, so, something like that. And you add in your cast members, so we'll say we'll have Harry, and we'll have Ron, and uh, Dumbledore, for example, okay? And you can choose whether these people are male or female. Um, at the moment it's called Matt Pullen Films, because obviously that's me, guy. this could be called anything, right? So this could be the name of your school, um, it could be anything. Do you know what, I'm going to keep it simple and just go back to... Um, Pulling films, but the galaxy background doesn't really work, right? It's an expedition film, so I'm going to change this and 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 have something maybe a little bit. There we go. So something a bit dark and moody, so the street lamp. So you choose like your film company's logo, etc. And then down the bottom, all the credits. Now this is what plays at the end. And again, you can change all of these. You know, directed by me and edited by me. If this was a group project, you might want to put more people in this. Um, if this was, you know, a, a group of students in the classroom, they can all have their different sections. Um, and this is good for kind of that roles. You know, distributing roles. We're going to make a movie, and whose role is whose? Who's going to direct it? Who's going to edit these parts together? Who's going to write the script? Maybe who's going to pull these things together? You can play around with lots and lots of different things with this. When you're done with that, we go to our storyboard, and this is the bit that really one it helps structure things for students so they can think for themselves about the layout of, of you know storyboarding, get to see the whole storyboard. You can stick very specifically to the text which is on here so you'll see that up here it says you know harry ron dumbledore i'm introducing those people and i might want to add in those pictures of those three people there but you don't have to you can go completely off piste if you want to just recreate the movie based on the text which is here you're probably looking to recreate it by having action shots and landscape shots and close-ups. Again, great for media literacy teaching for students. How do you make movies? Well, you're going to have these different things like close-ups and landscapes, wide shots, medium shots, groups. So there's lots and lots of information in here for teaching children about movie making and the different approaches. For the purposes of this, though, we're just going to kind of think about our um, idea. So we're going to say here, it's not three students. Dumbledore's not a student. He was a student, but he's not anymore. So it's not three students. It's three um, wizards. That's what I'll start with. And you see that you can see, oops, you can see that uh, you live get to create this um, on a quest for hidden treasure. Well, not really treasure, hidden potions, maybe. So you see how you can start to play around with this uh, embark on a journey um, across Mexico or well, maybe not Mexico um, I don't remember that being a setting for any of the Harry Potter films so we'll say maybe across London 
Um, or do you know what? Let's let's take Harry Potter to outer space and say across the universe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so you just build your story, right? So there's a storytelling element of this. I've used this quite a lot with with young learners to get them to read books and then get them to create a trailer of the book. So what were the key themes in the book? What are the things you want to get across? Who are the people in the story, etc.? Great as a book review. Okay, so let's go back up to top. So we've got this Harry. Okay, so um, I've got some pictures that I have taken. Oops, pictures. Let's go to my photo. So you can see here video photos. You can actually do live pictures and get yourself in there if you really want to. Um, I've got some images of Harry Potter that I wanted to use. If I can just find them very quickly. The simple process is like you just choose the picture. So there you go. Harry's in that one. It jumps straight to the next one. So this is how quick it is to make. Ron jumps into Ron. Then Dumbledore. Where's my picture of Dumbledore? One? Here we go. Moves to the next one. I want a group picture. Um, a wide frame, maybe we'll use this. This is just how quick it is to do, okay? So really, really nice and simple way of just adding all these things in together. Maybe we'll have this picture of Harry in here. Embark on a journey, um, I don't know, maybe a couple of shots of places across the universe. You know, I might need to go back and find some other pictures here. Maybe we'll take some planet ones, add those, you know, all sorts of ways that you can build this. I'm just very quickly doing this to show the process. You'll see it's just tap and hold. Now these can be videos as well. I'm using pictures, but you could just add in videos um, into any of these things that you might want to add in. Okay. So it all adds in. What you'll see here is each clip has a predetermined length of time it's going to be on. Okay, so you don't need to worry about the editing, but you do need to consider this. You know, if there's a lot of detail on your picture, but it's only going to be on for 0 0.9 seconds, you know, the audience aren't going to see it. But that's quite nice when you look at the effect afterwards, because it can quickly jump between different sections. Now, there is a part of editing that you can do. Obviously, we've got Ken Burns here that's been enabled. So again, if you've seen any of the other videos um, that we've looked at, what Ken Burns means, pinch to zoom. So it might be that I want to start off with a really you know close up there of Harry's face and then at the end of that shot so I tap on end it zooms out a little bit to show him you know with his magic wand similarly with Ron here it might be that we start off in close and then we end with a bit more of a um, you know a wider shot and so on and so forth you can continue doing that again with these ones it could be a panning shot so we start this side of the hall and we end up this side of the hall Okay, so as we move through that video, it, it goes from, um, you know, it's panning across the video, basically, um, and so on and so forth. So you can edit to a certain extent, um, but not really to the full extent you would in the whole iMovie thing, but that's why this is trailers. Now, if we just go back to the start of this, we can just preview this. So I'm just going to tap on play. So it adds in the music as well. I don't need to worry about that. That's it. It's it's really really quick and easy thing to do. So trailers, really good for book reviews. You know, read the book, make the trailer about the book. How would you advertise that to a friend? Um, you know, it could be movies that you've watched, could be school trips that you're going to take students on, and you're trying to build up that kind of anticipation of what's it all about, and you can put a little movie together. I used to use these as a PE teacher to introduce new sports. So we're going to learn a new sport. Um, and these are some of the things that you're going to learn about. And it would just kind of get that sense of excitement about something that you've done. So lots and lots of ways you can use iMovie trailers in your classroom.